we're going to tackle some arithmetic and geometric sequence problems. Now for most problems involving arithmetic sequences, you really only need to know one idea to be able to take a problem like this and turn it into an algebra problem that you already know how to solve. We like problems we already know how to solve. Now that one idea is what is an arithmetic sequence? In an arithmetic sequence, we start off somewhere with our first term. We usually call that A. And then each term after that, we just take steps of the same amount. So we'll call our step length D. So our second term is A plus D. Then we'll take another step of length D. That's A plus 2D. Then another step of length D, A plus 3D. And on and on and on. Now I'm not going to list these all the way out to the 80th term. Because we should be able to tell from this what the 80th term will be. The second term, we take one step of length D. We get to A plus D. The third term, we take two steps of length D to get to A plus 2D. Fourth term, we take three steps, A plus 3D. 80th term, we're going to take 79 steps to get out to A plus 79D. Now here we're told that the first term of the sequence is 7, so we don't even need to write the A down. We'll write down the 7. And we know that the 80th term is the first term, 7, plus 79 steps of length D. There's our 80th term. And we're told that that is twice the 30th term. And the 30th term, we're going to start at the first term of 7, and we're going to take 29 steps to get out to the 30th term. This is the algebra problem we know how to solve. We expand the right-hand side. Over here we still have 7 plus 79d. And over here we have 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 29 is 58, 58d. So now we'll subtract 58d from both sides and subtract 7 from both sides. And we'll have 21d equals 7. Divide both sides by 21, and d is 7 over 21, which is one-third. Now if we just write down one-third, we'll get the problem wrong. Last step, read the question. What is the 40th term? Now that we have D, we can figure that out. The first term is 7. To get out to the 40th term, we take 39 steps of length D. And now that we know that D is one-third, we can just put that in here. One-third of 39 is 13. 7 plus 13 is 20. And now we have the right answer to the problem, and we're ready for the next one. Here we have a geometric sequence problem. Now, geometric sequence, just like arithmetic sequences, one idea. We have that one idea down. We can turn all these words into algebra we know how to handle. And again, that idea is, what is a geometric sequence? Now, in a geometric sequence, again, we start off at the first term. Again, we're going to call it A. Conveniently, that's A in the problem as well. And then here, instead of adding by the same thing at each step, we're going to multiply by the same thing. I usually use R for common ratio. So the next term is A times R. For the next term, we multiply by R again. We get AR squared and then AR cubed. And we don't need to go any farther than that because we only have four terms in this particular sequence. And this is just A, B, C, and D. We'll go ahead and write those down as well so we can remember which is which. Now we can take all these words and turn them into equations involving just A and R. Two variables, a lot easier than four variables. B is three more than A. AR is B, and it's three more than A. So AR minus A is three. Got all my variables on one side, constant on the other. C is nine more than B. This is C, AR squared is C. AR is B. C is 9 more than B. Hmm. I can do with these equations. These are kind of complicated equations, complicated left hand sides, two variables mingled together. We can factor. Factoring is your friend. And notice that here it separates the A and the R. If I factor the A out here, I have A times R minus 1. Here I can factor out an A and an R. Factor out AR, and I'm left with R minus 1 again. Aha! Uh -huh. A times R minus 1 is 3. A times R minus 1. I can replace the A times the R minus 1 here. I can just rearrange this. 
as r times a times r minus 1. If I write it like that, then it's really obvious. I can take this a times r minus 1 and stick 3 in. And I have 3r equals 9. So now I can divide by 3, and I've learned that r equals 3. And if I put r equals 3 back in here, I have a times 2 equals 3. And that gives me a equals 3 halves. Now again, I go back and I read the question. What is the value of d? d is a times r cubed. I've got a, I've got r. I can find d. This is 3 halves times r cubed. r cubed is 3. 3 cubed is 27. 27 times 3 halves is 81 halves. We've tackled this problem. On to the last one. Oh boy, whole lot of words. Okay, arithmetic sequence problem. We know how to turn arithmetic sequences, all these words, into equations, into expressions. We have an arithmetic sequence. The difference between the terms is not zero. Okay, d isn't zero. The geometric mean of the first and eleventh terms. Well, here's what a geometric mean is. You take the two numbers, you multiply them, and take the square root. All right, so the first term, we're going to call that a. And the 11th term is you start at the first term and you take 10 steps. And the geometric mean then is going to be I take the product of the first term and the 11th term, and I take the square root. And I know that that equals the third term of the arithmetic sequence which is you start at the first term and you take two steps. Who oh boy. Nasty square root there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to square both sides so I can get rid of this big square root here. If I square both sides, it's going to square both sides. And what's going to happen over here is I'm going to have a times a plus 10d. The square root will go away. And then over here, I'm going to have a squared. And then expanding this out, have to remember that middle term like we did in an earlier Math Counts Mini. We have 2 times a times 2d. And then we have the square of the last term. Okay, we expand this side. We have a squared plus 10ad. And over here we still have the a squared. This we multiply out, we get 4ad. And that we multiply out, we get 4d squared. All right, the a squared, so subtract a squared from both sides. They'll just cancel out. I can subtract the 4ad from both sides, and I'll have 6ad equals... Uh-oh. I can't figure out a or d from this. Um, I'm stuck. Oh, I mean, when I'm really stuck, I go back to the problem and, and see if I missed anything. Well... Uh, the other thing I can do is try to figure out what I'm looking for. Keep your eye on the ball here. I'm looking for the ratio of the second term to the first term of the sequence. The second term, let's go ahead and write that down. The second term is a plus d. Start at the first term, take one step, and the first term is just a. Well, that a over a is just 1. So I can write this as 1 plus d over a. I don't have to find a and d. All I have to do is find their ratio. I can figure that out from here. Check this out. If I divide both sides by d, I cancel that d out, and this goes away. So now I have 6a equals 4d. Now I divide both sides by a and both sides by 4. And then I'll have 6 over 4 equals d over a. So d over a, I can simplify that as just 3 halves. 1 plus d over a. 1 plus 3 halves is 5 halves. Didn't have to find D, didn't have to find A. I got the solution just by taking my definition, what is an arithmetic sequence, and then turning all these words into equations I can handle.